In Los Angeles, there was a car dealer named Charlie Babbitt who is currently bringing in four black market Lamborghinis. The EPA is threatening the contract, and Charlie will lose a lot of money if he can't comply with its pollution control criteria. Don't tell me that, because I'm not even listening. After a brief subterfuge with a co-worker, Charlie and his girlfriend Susanna depart for a weekend getaway in Palm Springs. Charlie was forced to postpone his vacation because his estranged father, Sanford Babbitt, passed away. When Charlie returns to his hometown in Cincinnati, Ohio to settle the estate, he discovers that a certain trustee will receive $3 million on behalf of an unidentified beneficiary while he will only receive a 1949 Buick Roadmaster convertible and a number of priceless rosebushes that are all in danger of extinction due to neglect. Did you hear that letter? Were you listening? Eventually, it was revealed that the money was going to Walbrook, a mental facility where Charlie's older brother Raymond, who is autistic, resides. Charlie was previously unaware of Raymond's existence. Raymond is an overgrown child because, while having autism, he has great functioning, excellent memory recall, and minimal subject understanding. Why'd you let him get in this car? She it's not a she, toy. He says he drives this car. Dad lets me drive slow on the driveway every Saturday. Of course, the seats were originally brown leather. Now they're pitiful red. After discovering he has a brother, Charlie becomes enraged and determined to take what he sees as his just portion of the Babbitt estate. The is why didn't anybody tell me I had a brother? What would you have done about it? Raymond, who has always lived in Walbrook voluntarily, is inadvertently taken from Walbrook by Charlie. Charlie rapidly grows impatient with Raymond's actions and later learns that Raymond won't board a flight to Los Angeles. He's okay, we're not gonna take the plane. Charlie has no choice but to take the Buick back to LA. Charlie plans to file for custody in order to persuade Raymond's physician to reach an out-of-court agreement for half of Sanford Babbitt's fortune so that the mental institution will continue having custody of Raymond. Charlie eventually learns about Raymond's autism. He also discovers how his brother lost contact with his family due to an incident that occurred when Charlie was left alone with Raymond when Charlie around 20 months old and Raymond was 10 years old. In addition, Raymond performs I Saw Her Standing There by the Beatles as he used to when Charlie was 3 or 4 years old. Charlie has vivid memories of the experience from as early as he can remember, and he has always believed that the singer whom the young Charlie referred to as the Rain Man was a fictional character. Charlie turns on the hot water in the hotel room bathtub as he and his brother are reminiscing about their relationship. Raymond then has an episode in which he slaps himself and cries, warning Charlie that the hot water would burn him if he touches it. Charlie learns that Raymond's parents sent him to Walbrook after he scalded his younger brother while attempting to bathe him. When Charlie observes Raymond's precision memory, he took Raymond to Las Vegas to play blackjack and used this special ability to his advantage so he can pay off his large debts back in LA. Security at the casino starts to follow Charlie and Raymond, but they are unable to uncover any evidence that either is utilizing a cheater's strategy to outsmart the house and win. When security discovers Raymond alone at the casino's bar, they send a lovely woman. She is successful in getting Raymond to make a reference about Charlie and him counting cards. We're counting cards. You're counting cards. We're counting cards. Security then requests a private conversation with Charlie and advises him to collect his winnings, which is roughly $80,000, and depart then Charlie agrees. Is this how you treat all your guests? All you have to do is close your mouth and go home, and those are the best odds you're going to see for a while. When Susanna runs into Charlie and Raymond at the motel, she and Charlie reconcile after having a falling out over Charlie's cold treatment of his brother just before the journey from Cincinnati had started. In the end, Charlie has developed a genuine affection for Raymond and finds himself getting protective of him. Charlie returns to Los Angeles and meets with his lawyer to pursue his inheritance part, but later says he doesn't care about the money and truly just wants to be in charge of his brother. It's not about the money anymore. It's... Unfortunately, Raymond is unable to decide what he wants when he meets with Dr. Bruner and a court-appointed psychiatrist. The psychiatrist eventually pushes Raymond to make the choice. Do you want to stay with your brother Charlie here in Los Angeles? Yeah. Or do you want to go back to Walbrook? Yeah. Which upsets him and prompts Charlie to ask the psychiatrist to back off. Raymond may return to Cincinnati, where he was born. But I just want you to know that what I said about being on the road with you, I meant, you know, connecting. I like having you for my brother. I'm an excellent driver. 
As Raymond boards an Amtrak train with Bruner, Charlie makes a commitment to his brother that he will visit in two weeks. Ray! Ray! Yeah. I'll see you soon. Yeah, one for bad, two for good. <laughs>